Hello and welcome to the third video in this series looking at data visualization using Tableau Public 8. Here we'll look at the enigmatic tree map. Despite their names, tree maps don't have a whole lot to do with the trees of a leafy variety. Tree here is used as a metaphor for a branching hierarchy of information. Now they're defined as a method for displaying hierarchical, hierarchical data in the form of nested rectangles, whatever that means. They were invented by a computer engineer, Ben Schneiderman in the 1990s as a way of visualizing how space and hard disks is allocated. Um, until recently I wasn't sold on tree maps, however one of the food students successfully used them as part of some presentation she did during some summer voluntary work and they certainly can be useful in some circumstances, especially when combined with a dynamic presentation of data. So what are they and how do they work? As usual, the best way to approach this is to build some. They're very visual, and a picture is worth, as is well known, quite a few words. The data we're using is the scores on the doors food hygiene information with Middlesbrough. This can be found at the Food Standards Agency website. There are other websites, both local and national, that allow you to search for individual premises, but this site has the data for all, all of the data for the town, and in fact, all the data for the country. The download column contains links to the data file, so download the file for Middlesbrough or any other area of interest if you want to play along. The file you get is in XML format and when you double click it opens directly into a web browser, which isn't very useful. You get this complicated looking uh, file. XML, Extensible Markup Language, is a file format designed to transport and store data. And what we need is a program to read it for us, which isn't a problem. Right clicking on the file and selecting open with brings up a list of programs, none of which are what we want. It's a bit bizarre, the list doesn't exclude, include Excel, which is the program which opens this up in the format we want. Just open Excel and drag it up the file. It should open in something much more familiar. Save this as a proper Excel file. Uh, there's still, uh, still a number of things to fix. Some of the numbers, some of what appear to be numbers really aren't, for example. Uh, they need to be numbers to make the visualizations work and we also need to do some basic, we may want to do some basic calculations in Tableau. Probably not going to do that here but we may come back to that in a later video. So we'll go to the practical demonstration. Okay here's our XML file, pick it up and drop it into Excel. Uh, we want to import as an XML file, okay. Uh, it doesn't have a schema so I will create one. A schema is just a way of organizing data, so we click OK there. And after a moment, we have lots of information uploaded. Uh, a lot of this we don't particularly need, like the extract date. And if you look a bit further over here, it's got a local authority name, which is always going to be Middlesbrough, obviously. Same way for the website and email, so we're probably going to want to delete them at some point. Um, something else we ought to look at is, yeah, the rating value. Okay, so that's the rating value for scores on the doors, which, as you know, goes from 0 to 5. But there are also some text values in here, exempt, and a bit further on awaiting inspection. Now, we want to get rid of them, um, because we want to only have numeric values. Now, that looks like a 5, and it appears to be a numeric value. It actually isn't. It is a textual value, uh, and you can't do numeric manipulations on it. You can tell that by the fact that it's got a green triangle in the top corner. Now, there's a little uh, dialogue appeared here. If you be careful with the mouse, you can bring down this um, this uh, drop down menu and click on convert to number. Right, so we'll notice it went from being left justified to right justified. So that's now a number. Right, so I'm going to do a couple of things here. First thing I'm going to do is sort this uh, A to Z. So we've got the numbers at the top and the rows which contain exempt and a bit further up probably awaiting inspection at the bottom. I'm going to delete all of them. I'm also going to delete all of the um, information that we don't want such as local authority website. Okay there's a passing ship went by there which was interesting. Uh, first thing I'm probably going to do though is something you should always do with spreadsheets which is select everything, control C to copy then create a new sheet and paste in the information you want to play with. So uh, we can do this two ways. I'm, I'm going to paste uh, values to get rid of all the formatting. Right, so as I mentioned, I'm going to get rid of the columns that aren't relevant. I'm going to make all these into 
into numeric values by selecting them all and using this option. And I'm going to delete at the bottom the uh, these te these textural values. So I'm going to pause this now. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, here's the spreadsheet with the extraneous columns removed, and I've converted rating value into and uh, numbers. Uh, hygiene structure, hygiene structural, and comments and management were already numbers, and I've left in longitude and latitude. We may come back to it later on, perhaps do a map as well. Okay, I've saved that as an Excel file, uh, so we can close that up and open up Tableau Public. So we'll pick up our Excel spreadsheet and drop it into here. Um, I don't know it's sheet two. Uh, probably should have named it something more memorable, which I was good practice to do, but um, in this case, we can just click on OK. And after a moment, our information will appear. Now we're going to create uh, a pretty boring tree map to start with. It's just going to be one of business type, uh, scaled by the number of businesses in that particular type. So it's quite easy to do. We just pick up business type and we drop it in here. Uh, I'll bring down show me so, so, so we can see what we can get. At the moment, we're going to only have a table. So the next thing we want to do is bring in number of records. I'm going to pick up and drop in the color. Uh, number of different type data visualization types appear. The one we're interested in is the tree map, of course. Uh, and there's the simplest and not particularly interesting tree map. If we hover over any one, it'll tell us that's retailers, others, and there's 205 of them. Uh, if we want to add the number to the tree map itself, we can just pick up, in this case, its number of records and drop it into label, and that now appears there. Um, as usual, we can do the various things we do with editing colours. So we click on edit colours, uh, pick someone we like. Perhaps give the step colour and then uh, now categorise by different colours. Okay, so the thing I need to do here now is rename this sheet. We're going to call this basic. And uh, then you save it. And in the next step, we're going to look at doing something a little bit more complicated. Now we're going to create a, a tree map which we can control dynamically. It's going to end up looking a little bit different than this one. So we open up a new tab and I'm going to rename it straight away as dynamic. Plus it's going to be dynamic. Right, and to do this, we take a slightly different route to the way we normally do things. We normally pick up data and drop it in this area. In this, this case, it seems to work best if we start working with a marks table. So I'm going to pick up rating value and drop it into colour. And we get the world's most boring data visualisation. We make it even more boring by picking up rating value again and dropping it into size. Uh, so far, so not very interesting. Right, now what we're interested in at this stage is business name. So I pick up business name and drop it into detail, we'll immediately get a tree map produced. Um, not a particularly interesting tree map. If we hover over any of these, uh, any of these uh, oblongs, we get, for example, Howling Goth. I'm not quite sure where that is, which has a rating of five stars, so good for them. Um, we need to disaggregate. Uh, so go to aggregate measures and disaggregate, and it becomes even more complicated than it was before. Uh, but don't panic. Uh, because in the moment all will become clear. The next thing I'm going to do is change the colour color scheme. Go to edit colours in the usual way. And I want to pick a colour which starts off with red uh, down to zero end, and in this case we'll end up with blue. I'm going to set as a step colour. So red for those businesses that have zero rating and five for those businesses that have five star rating. I beg your pardon, blue for those businesses that have five star rating. So I click on OK. Still very complicated. If uh, down the bottom Right, we have a cluster of uh, businesses with zeros. We're not going to pick anyone out individually to uh, name and shame them. The next thing we want to do is be able to control this on the basis of business type. So there's business type. I pick it up and I drop it into pages. And immediately, almost everything seems to have disappeared. That's because of this control. At the moment, it is only showing distributors and transporters. There's not many of them. Um, or origin, original produce company, for example, is one with a five star rating. Uh, we've all got five star ratings. If we look at the next one, hospitals and childcare, you'll see there's a lot more of those businesses and organisations. And there's a few uh, threes and fours down there. Hotels, bed and breakfast, manufacturing packets, packets, again, not many in all five star. 
mobile caterers down the bottom we see our first uh, ones and zeros other care on premises pubs bars nightclubs uh, restaurants cafes and uh, various other similar businesses and down the bottom right there are five in the red zone with zero ratings retailers others two in the red zone supermarkets none in the red zone as you expect schools college and university we're in there somewhere uh, takeaways and sandwich shops the biggest group with their red zone ones eight in this case uh, so there we are that, what this is is a dynamic way of using a tree map to show in in this case the quantity the number of organizations and then ranking them by in this case scores on the doors by color so this is quite a powerful i would suggest a dynamic way of showing this information Here's a completed dashboard for the scores on the doors data. Um, you should think about how you might improve this visualization. There's a QR link here, and the visualization will open on a phone, but it's probably a bit fiddly at that scale. It should work okay in a PC. Uh, well, it'll definitely work okay in a PC, and probably on a tablet as well. Here's another example. This visualization allows you to drill down into the nutritional content of an orange. At the top level, the visualization is dominated by macronutrients, especially the most important biological molecule, water. Successively, unselecting the most abundant nutrients will reveal the micronutrients, first the minerals and then the vitamins. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for listening.